Uh, I'm just here to go through some news real quick. And today I was just, I had thoughts in my mind. You know, I, I got up this morning with a lot of thoughts in my mind. And and when I saw this picture on the screen in front of you, it's coming from the Guardian News. And, and I'm just going to run it real quick here. But this is India, as you see at the bottom. Aerial view shows scale of monsoon flooding in Karela, India. I just let it run. Um, and, you know, I was watching that, and I just started thinking about the world in general. You know, I started thinking about why people can't seem to see that everything we get wrapped up in, all this materialism in our life, we get wrapped up in materialism and these things are just to hear temporary. You know, Yeshua give us these things temporary. And we seem to just love to be wrapped up in these things. You know, the material things, houses and lands and, and expensive cars and you name it, you know, and everybody just out trying to make the big money, the big money, the big money. And um, so every time I looked at that, I thought about Florida. I thought about all the hurricanes. I thought about all the disasters the fires are just taking away a lot of things, you know, a lot of things all around us. And I'm getting a lot of dreams coming in, but we having quakes today. Uh, 6.5 quakes uh, just hit Indonesia today again. The Boo 77 is talking about it. Uh, we got a lot of trouble with uh, Yellowstone. It's just getting worse. And, you know, we got all these things going on. And... Uh, I was looking at a video that I'm going to be showing a little bit of it from um, Think About It. You know, you heard of his video, Think About It. He's talking about uh, the apostate church. It was posted on Light Has Come. Uh, I love Light Has Come, a newsletter where you get all the news coming in, different people, revelations and dreams and things of that nature. Uh, so I'll be talking about that a little bit. I'm going to show that a little bit. And then so I was just thinking about all this materialism stuff, though and the quakes and the tornadoes and the volcanoes and all the things that can come in like seconds and take away your life savings and the fires come in and this lady was saying they had been just build a house for years you know took all the money to put into their house to get it up on uh in the country or in the woods and then the fires come along and take it away instantly and so this is why i don't know why people would put their mind on materialism and so i was looking in the bible and I'm going to go there now before I get to the other stuff. I was looking in the Bible and uh, at uh, a scripture coming from uh, uh, 1 Timothy 6 chapter. And it's talking about that here, people. Let's go read that real quickly. Uh, it's talking about that here. Um, 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. And it's coming from the Son of Man Bible version. And it says here, tell the rich in this world not to be proud. And not the hope and riches, which are uncertain. Instead, they should hope in your in Jehovah. <coughs> we got smoke in the air, and it just really bothered my throat a lot. I don't know what it is, because I never had these problems before. <coughs> so bear with me. Um, and so it says, um, instead, they should hope in Jehovah. He offers to us all the true riches to enjoy, okay? Tell them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share. In that way, they will store up for themselves a good foundation for what is to come so that they will take hold of real life. Timothy, protect what was given to you. Avoid the foolish talk and contradictory arguments of what is falsely called knowledge. And, you know, and I thought about, I just thought about these verses. You know, the world is falsely calling a lot of things out there, uh, just arguments over money, arguments fighting over money, people just going crazy over money and wealth and riches. And, you know, in the Bible also, if you go to, uh, if you go to uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, it does say, but remember the Lord your God, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. And then he always talked about the needy, you know, but the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Uh, and then and he go on to talk about because of the oppression of the weak and the groaning of the needy, 
I will now rise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who may leg them. Uh, Psalm 12, 5. And then you can go on and read another one, that, which I like here is the sleep of a laborer is sweet. The sleep of a laborer is sweet. Whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. A wealth lost through some misfortune. Just like I just said, all these storms coming in. Uh, people can die in the family. You can have tons and tons of misfortune, misfortunes in your life. So he talk about how all this stuff come, uh, you lose it through misfortune. Uh, so that when he has a son, there's nothing left for him. And so, you know, that's coming from Ecclesiastes 5, 12 to 14. Ecclesiastes is full of uh, great wisdom and knowledge uh, and Proverbs, okay, which is part of uh, Ecclesiastes. So, um, you know, we need to understand that. I was thinking about uh, looking at the death, uh, you know, of, of, of Rita Franklin. And I, I was just thinking about it, you know, that world out there, uh, you know, Whitney Houston and all these great singers and uh, people who had voices in the church and they went into the world to give their talents to the world. And, you know, how this world have just bought them down to naught, bought them down to naught because they got involved with alcohol and drugs and, and all these things, you know. And I think about my life, people, back in, in the 70s when I was coming out of high school and I had this opportunity. I had just got married, uh, you know, and and I uh, got married at a young age, my first marriage, uh, around eight, not, almost close to 19 after I got out of uh, high school, went to college my first two years. And then I uh, got involved with uh, a group, uh, they had this man who was looking for talent in the area. He was looking for talent in the area. And so I called in and went in for an interview, and, and he wanted to uh, put me in the Commodores. You heard of the Commodores back in the 70s. And he wanted me to sing in his backup music with his girls and everything. And so uh, my husband at the time was really jealous of it. He didn't want me to do it. So he he just said, no, my wife is not going to be doing that. I'm sorry. So he cut it out, and I am glad that it didn't work out. Because when I look at all this fame and popularity and all this stuff out in the world out there, and Yeshua say we are in the world but not of the world. Love not the things in the world. And, you know, he really made us for his purpose to do what he would have us to do right now, people, right now for souls. That's why he says, store not your treasures upon the earth when, when men break in and steal and moth does corrupt. And, you know, I, I all these things been on my mind today. I'm like, wow, you know, all these things are so, have so much meaning to them when he tell the rich in this world not to be proud, not to hope in riches, which are uncertain, uncertain. You know, I, all the people who I know have, uh, one big lotteries. And, it's, and you know, I think about a lottery myself sometimes. But, you know, I say, all oh, you can give to the poor. You can help the poor a whole lot. But, you know, a lot of people who get this money, uh, the devil come in their life and, and, and they just go crazy. I knew a guy who uh, was a lawyer one time. And he was saying, uh, you know, uh, his sisters had won the lottery, you know, and they won all this money and they went all over the world. You know, they traveled and they just partied and they just had a good time. And he said, Marnie, you know what? Two years after two years, they were broke, didn't have nothing. They didn't invest a dime. They didn't buy gold and silver. They didn't do anything. They didn't invest anything. So I just say, wow, you know, people just go crazy over money and riches. And Yeshua said it's going to come to naught. And he did say one day, and I'm just going to read that because I was just looking at that too. It says here in Ezekiel 7:19. Uh, let me see. I just read both of them. Proverbs 11:4 says, "Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death." And then you go to Ezekiel 7:19. It says, "They will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be an unclean thing. Their silver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath." Okay, this is talking about the Lord's wrath. That's why I tell you people, don't get crazy now. You should be trying to invest in a little silver right now because it's going down. It's $14 and something if you have a little junk silver or whatever because it is going to go up as I know my lowest shop talks about it on her video as well and Charles Whelan and different others out there. But, it, you know, it's going to come a time when we're going to need a little, you know, 
uh, silver or something to carry us through because of what's coming. And the dollar is worthless, okay? But he, that's why I say even the Bible say in the day of the Lord's wrath. So in the day of the Lord's wrath, we won't be here. Hopefully, we won't be here. We'll be out of here. Yahweh would take the rapture will have occurred or came before the Lord's wrath. Okay, so I say their silver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it. For it has made them stumble into sin. Okay, you hear that? It has made them stumble into sin. And I think about that with the world out there, with all the people into the world. They just uh, rich and wealthy and famous and whatever. And they if they not giving their life to Yeshua HaMashiach and really following him for his purpose, I'm telling you people, as it says here in Proverbs 13, 7, I will put all these uh, these scriptures in the description box for you guys to look at later. One man pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet he has great wealth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so happy about that because uh, as it says in Ecclesiastes 5.10, whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless, okay? So we need to be uh, content, like Paul said, be content with what you have. And what you do have, share it with others and let Yeshua increase you because I'm telling you this world is going away, going away fast, people. So um, you can turn that fan on if you like, the little one. Uh, but I'm going to uh, be going over here to... Um, <clears throat> I was just thinking about people who stressing out. I'm, I'm going to finish my last little words here. Uh, stressing out with bills and problems and no peace and stressed out and, and worried and in debt and just all this stuff that riches and wealth and money can do to a person. And then they don't even give to the poor. A half of them don't even help the poor. It's all about my family, my family. And so, you know, it, it's just all this stuff that goes on around us. So, I just love Second First Timothy where it talked about that, and it's been on my mind today, so that's why I'm um, talking about it. But we got all these disasters coming, people, like he said, and uh, India's underwater. We got all kind of floods on the uh, East Coast. We got all kind of things going on, and it's just starting. These are the times of sorrows, and so we're going to be knowing things going to keep uh, fluctu fluctuating. And so... Um, I would advise you people to watch. Uh, I was just trying to watch that a while ago. I'm going to get out of this now and go to something else. I was trying to uh, watch this, but I can't watch this right now. And I want you people to be aware of it. So I'm going to just put it on here to screen real quick. Uh, where you, can, you can be aware of it. I'm going to put it in the description box, okay? It's uh, uh, See Kim Ware. You know she have a website. She have a YouTube channel. So I want you guys to go try to listen to A Minute to Midnight, uh, this censorship with Jim Weir about her life and she's talking about her life how um let's see what it says here she's talking about uh uh testimony of being a survivor of satanic ritual abuse satanic ritual abuse and so it's a very uh a dynamic story I'm going to be listening to the whole program when I get off here and also I'm going to be going here now a uh, brother over from uh New Zealand sent me a dream Oh, this flashed up. I got the wrong button here. But since it flashed up, I absolutely want you guys to go listen to her as well. She's talking about the first transgender nominee for governor. And this governor thinks that radi radicalized Christians are a threat. And so and so that's what my one of my other topics today is about uh, coming from, uh, like I say, light has come. And he's talking about the church. The apostate church is paving the way for the man of sin. And he's talking about the same thing, about uh, all these transgenders and all these people doing what they want to do, trying to take over the world. Because they want a new world order, one world order. But I will be putting all these things in the description box. But the dream I had, let me see if this is the right button here. Yes, it is here. The dream I'm talking about is coming from New Zealand. And I, I'm, sh I'm sharing this today, Simon, of your son who had the... Um, the dream. And so he said here, he had a dream, a vision given to me while in worship to God. And I'm just going to read it to you guys real quick here. He said, I know for sure. Uh, and he was talking about the fourth top here. He got a little picture here. Uh, is uh, I mean, I don't know if I can open that, but it's got a picture there. 
and he's talking about the little, the dreams, the uh, illustrations he had of his dream. But I would be posting it in the description box, and you guys can click on the little pictures and see it. Okay. But he says here, I know for sure. I know for sure the fourth top is the final scene. At the expense of forgetting the order, I weighed the decision to share this so as not to have blood on my hands when so much in the world is going on. And much of, the pro uh, much of this prophecy is actually coming to pass as we speak. And many prophecies and visions I've read all predict the Russian invasion of the United States and possibly one or many nukes going off. The vision was pretty much self-explanatory with no audio, okay, with no audio. My, my take on the hot disintegrating could be the world's foundation falling apart towards more chaos including apostasy in the church body, which I've seen heightened lately, even here in quiet little Louisiana, even here in quiet little New Zealand, the mass of people would be worldwide anarchy and uprising revolutions. The bat creature I feel is the final and points towards the beast world government rising and the world dictator in power. The mushroom cloud speaks for itself. I hope you can share this and pass it on. Whether you think I'm a doomsday freak, false prophet, not of God, or what have you, I stand by what the vision I got, and I will go to judgment and say I only told them what I saw. I did not claim to be anything or anyone. God bless you all. Shalom and Yeshua. So thank you for that so much, sharing that with me, Simon. And then also, uh, I'm going to go here now and play this other video here uh, where I am uh, I wanted you guys to hear of coming from uh, Miss Sophie Page. Uh, let me see here, Miss, P Miss Sophie Page here. Uh, so, uh, see here, uh, I know the name of this thing. Light has come. I, I couldn't see it on the screen. Light has come. Yeah, light has come. Okay, at the top. And I'm going to just play this and let you hear this a few minutes. And then I'm going to go over to uh, something else I want to talk about real quickly. Uh, but I ask that you look at all these uh, uh, links I've showed you in the description box. For time's sake, I won't play them all. I'm also going to be putting in the description box, Lion and the Lamb Ministries got a world update about what's going on with Iran and what's going on in the uh, world at, right now. Uh, his Sabbath report. So I will put that down in the description box as well. So uh, let's play this now, people. Okay. Hi, Steve here. It's not a big surprise when we see the world embracing sin and perversion and injustice. But when the church participates in the same activities as the world, it's proof positive that we are in the apostasy of the last days. And remember, God has never changed. God hates sin. John 3, 16 tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for our sin so that we can be set free from sin. But the world tells us that God loves us just the way we are. He does love us just the way we are, but he hates the sin that people are living in. And if we're not born again, those sins will cost us our eternal life with him. It's not my goal to dwell on this specific sin, but it is one of the most damnable lies that the world and the apostate church are teaching. It's understandable that the world teaches these things, but when the church teaches these things, we know that they have defected from the truth. That's what apostasy meant. It's what Jesus meant in Matthew chapter 24 when he said, at that time, Many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people. And many people's love will grow cold because of increased distance from Torah. The further we get away from God's teaching, the more apostate the church becomes. Here's an article in the Miami Herald, and now it's breaking news. A Vermont executive will be the nation's first transgender governor. It's working. The Victory Fund, the political action committee that backs LGBTQ candidates across the country, calls Hallquist a game changer. If elected in November, Hallquist would become the first openly transgender governor in the country because she is open and authentic about the fact that she's transgender. That immediately takes away all the questions, all the whispers, and instead allows people to focus on her personality and what she wants to do, said Elliot MC, communication director for the Victory Fund.
people are liking what they're hearing. And that's what's really cool about Christine, unquote. Homosexuality, transgender, gender bending, it's all been taught in today's world as being perfectly normal, but it's not. So of course it's acceptable, but the truth is it's not acceptable with God. So to tell people that God's okay with you being gay because he loves you just the way you are is a complete doctrine of demons. Any lie will send you to hell is a lie and a doctrine of demons. And soon on YouTube, a chorus of voices. It gets better. I can. A lot of people can. From the president to the cast of Jersey Shore, telling gay youth. And every day, it gets better. Look at what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Thessalonians about the last days. But in connection with the coming of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we ask you, brothers, not to be easily shaken in your thinking or anxious because of a spirit or a spoken message or a letter supposedly from us claiming that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until the apostasy has come and the man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. He will oppose himself to everything that people call a god or make an object of worship. He will put himself above them all so that he will sit in the temple of God and proclaim that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is restraining so that he may be revealed in his own time. For already this separating from Torah is at work secretly, but it will be secretly until he who is restraining is out of the way. Then the one who embodies separation from Torah will be revealed. The one whom the Lord Yeshua will slay with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the glory of his coming. When this man who avoids Torah comes, the adversary, Satan in other words, will give him the power to work all kinds of false miracles, signs and wonders. He will enable him to deceive in all kinds of wicked ways, those who are headed for destruction because they would not receive the love of the truth that could have saved them. This is why God is causing them to go astray so that they will believe the lie. The result will be that all who have not believed the truth but have taken their pleasure in wickedness will be condemned. This doctrine of tolerance and so-called love is the gospel the world preaches. But it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a lie. It's a counterfeit. Jack Whitehall will play Disney's first ever gay character in a Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie, The Jungle Cruise. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, don't you know that unrighteous people will have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't delude yourselves. People who engage in sex before marriage, who worship idols, who engage in sex after marriage with someone other than their spouse, who engage in active or passive homosexuality, who steal, who are greedy, who get drunk, who assail people with contemptuous language, who rob, none of them will share in the kingdom of God. This is the same Apostle Paul that preached the gospel of grace. But it's grace that God gives us to receive his only begotten son, that we may be saved and delivered from the power of sin. It's a complete lie to say that the grace of God covers a life lived in sin. It does not. What did Paul tell the Colossian people? Therefore, from the day we heard of it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will in all the wisdom and understanding which the Holy Spirit gives, so that you may live lives worthy of the Lord and entirely pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and multiplying in the full knowledge of God. We pray that you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might so that you will be able to persevere and be patient in any situation joyfully, joyfully giving thanks to the Father for having made you fit to share in the inheritance of his people in the light. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. It is through his son that we have redemption. That is, our sins have been forgiven. Not so we can go live in them again, but we've been delivered from the power that sin had over us. In 2010, 
Atlanta Bishop Jim Swilly said he was moved to share that he knows a lot of straight people that think that orientation is a choice. I want to tell you that it certainly is not. He founded one of the most prominent mega churches in America and has been pastor of George's Church in the Now for 25 years. Twice married, a father of four, Pastor Jim Swilly just revealed Monday that he's gay, a secret he's been struggling with since childhood. Coming out now, he says, is not simply a personal decision. As Steve Osinsami reports, the pastor hopes his public testimony will save young lives. And I wouldn't have known what to it was a difficult admission in front of the church he founded east of Atlanta. Bishop Jim Swilly has been married twice and is the father of four. But one week ago, he says he was moved to share that he's gay. I know a lot of straight people think that uh, orientation is a choice. I want to tell you that it certainly is not. He says he's coming out now because of gay suicides. Everyone, he says, is one too many. He says he hopes his truth will save a life. To think about saving a teenager, yeah, I'll, I'll risk my reputation for that. As a father, um, I think about, you know, think about your 16, 17-year-old <clears throat> killing himself. The suicides have certainly changed the discussion across the country since September 22nd, when 18-year-old Tyler Clementi jumped off a bridge after his roommate allegedly revealed his sexuality on the internet, there have been rallies and vigils, and one man started a movement online. So I was obviously gay, and some kids didn't like that. Dan Saber did the first video. He called the campaign, It Gets Better. Hearing about these kids who are committing suicide, the reaction as a gay adult is always, God, I wish I could have just talked to him for 15 minutes or five minutes and told them it gets better. Three weeks later, at a city council meeting in Fort Worth, Texas, gay city councilman Joel Burns was moved to share his emotional story, how close he came to killing himself when he was just 13. Life got so much better for me. And I want to tell any teen who might see this, give yourself a chance to see just how much life how much better life will get. And every day, it gets better. Bishop Swilly says he is proof his family, including his ex-wife, remain by his side. He believes that God loves you for who you are. That's not what God says. It's what men who want to live that lifestyle say. It's what young men who have been propagandized and conditioned to believe say. And now today, this is what we have. Black, gay, and lesbian pastors merged churches to promote radically inclusive theology. The word inclusive leads us right into a one-world religion. And that new world order, one-world religion, has no room for Christianity. Last year, this article came out in Religion News Service. A gay couple will pastor a historic church in Washington. A 155-year-old church severed ties with the Southern Baptist Convention in 2012 it found itself disagreeing with the group on several issues, including the SBC's stance against homosexuality. Calvary Baptist still affiliates with the American Baptist Churches USA, the Alliance of Baptists, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and the District of Columbia Baptist Convention. Maria Swearingen and Sally Surratt co-pastor the Calvary Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America voted in 2009 to allow non-celibate gays and lesbians to lead parishes, and a list of so-called Christian denominations affirming LGBT just in America is staggering. Apostasy is simply defection from the truth. Jesus called it distance from Torah or walking further away from his word and God's teachings. We can check that off. Now we're just waiting for what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians. The man who separates himself from Torah to be revealed, the one destined for doom. He will oppose himself to everything that people call a God or make an object of worship. He will put himself above them all so that he will sit in the temple of God and proclaim that he himself is God. Who could that be? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge. Think about it. Okay, I'll just stop there. I don't know if I agree with that last one, but <laughs> I told you guys we got many antichrists, so, and I already told you my uh, 
thoughts on that from, you know, the royal families and things of that nature. But Yahweh said it will be many antichrists. They all working together. So the bring in this one world order, new world order, one world religion. So we all got to keep our eyes and ears open. So I got another thing I want to talk about real quickly here. I thought it was really amazing to me. Um, let me see if I can get out of this here. Uh, let me see if I can get it off of my... Uh, see, okay, yeah, I want to get back there, get there a minute. And I'm going to pull this up. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about this because I thought this was interesting. But um, you guys know that I have my friends in prison, and I'm going to just read something coming from Michael today. Uh, he wrote some letter. Him and him and another a gentleman wrote letters today to me. And uh, and I thought this was amazing because I, I said this. I never had this happen before. But uh, anyway, um, he says here, I'm going to just read this a very little bit here, what he said, but it's something he said that i like to repeat to you guys. And he says here, um, uh, he mentioned something about the, okay, here it is. Um, I love you two children of Father uh, Yahweh. As you already know, a piece of his awesome self lives inside all of his calls and his chosen ones. Many are called, few are chosen because they go back inside the whole world of the master of evil. The world is Egypt. Absolutely, Michael. The world is Egypt. Satan is the Pharaoh and Babylon is all false religions. Uh, so I just thought that was interesting. I like, that's what I want to share with you. And he just tell, talking about some other things, but, and then he's introduced another brother uh, and he wrote me a little short letter and he says, I am Lenny and I studied the Bible with Michael and he speaks very highly of you and that you do a good, lot of good work. I wish it could be more. I hope this will bless someone a little bit. God knows I give it with my heart. God bless your ministry, uh, Lanny. And uh, so these are the these are the two offerings they send us today, people. And I'm like, wow, you know, how do you get checks from prison? But you know, these brothers are, are talking, uh, ministering in prison, uh, you know, worshiping in prison, uh, telling people about the good news in prison, uh, giving tracts and books out in prison. Uh, and Michael has been teaching a lot of brothers in prison. So I just love these brothers so much. Uh, continually keep Michael in his prayers. And you can add uh, Lanny to your prayers as well. Because we are one day going to have a big fellowship when he is out of prison. And I pray for his wife, Sharon, as well. Uh, so I just want to share that guy, share that with you guys, okay? But I tell you, it, it's just amazing how Yeshua... Uh, does these things and bless the ministry through givers like you guys. And I really appreciate all the givers. Uh, we appreciate everything you're doing for this ministry. Uh, we ask that you, uh, if you have your, uh, if you want to give to the ministry, I always talk about it. Uh, you can go to my PayPal account at uh, fill my cup. I mean, my my PayPal account, sorry guys, at marner.campbell at gmail.com. And also you can go uh, send a check, a money order out to uh, Post Office Box, uh, Fill My Cup Ministries uh, at Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, you can come here at my event. Uh, my husband is working on some other avenues, and he'll be talking about that with you guys uh, on, at another time. But he's setting up some other avenues for giving as well. Um, this is my event, um, and we have a link posted down below in the description box where you can give at uh, my event. Only, my event, when you give to my event, I prefer you to give to PayPal, uh, write a check if you want, but if you're going to have a big offering, if you go to my event, it's okay, but it takes two weeks for it to clear, and then it takes another additional week for it to clear. So it takes almost three weeks for it to clear. But uh, that's fine, you know, because a lot of you live in other states and uh, I mean, out of state, I mean, other nations, I'm sorry to say, Africa, India, all over the world. Uh, you may be in uh, New Zealand, uh, uh, any of those places, and you might want to give through uh, my event. So that's really wonderful. wonderful. Uh, we always raise the money to help brothers with electronics and the mission field. Uh, right now, we're trying to help uh, uh, two or three brothers with electronics and 
uh, laptops and phones and things of this nature, a lot of them just don't have the ways to co uh, communicate when they're out in the mission field. So that's why we always need uh, money to come in to help these brothers in the mission field, uh, help the homeless and different people having uh, problems in their life. Uh, I know we're just praying for a brother in Nevada who was having problems with his wife and uh um, she's pregnant, two kids, they didn't have any jobs. So, you know, the monies always go to the, to the poor and to the needy, to the homeless, to the mission field, to help ministers, uh, to do a greater job for Yeshua. So we just thank you so much. Uh, we know the Sabbath is coming <clears throat> and I'm going to be ending this 35 minutes and I'm going to be ending this now, but, uh, you guys have a wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful Shabbat and, uh, I love the Torah, as his brother was just talking about the Torah, uh, because like I said, we need to worship Yeshua and not worship man. Because, you know, as we know in the uh, scriptures, we know that the Bible, uh, in the Bible, the laws of God was changed, okay, by man. And, and so but Yeshua never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I'm just going to read the fourth commandment that it says here, and I'm going to let you guys go. It says in the fourth commandment, of the commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And if you go to Genesis, you will see that very clearly uh, in Genesis, uh, where he talk about that, how he he sanctified, uh, he, he set it aside and, and made it holy uh, from all the other days, okay? Because I hear people say, oh, it don't matter what day, it don't matter. You know, all the other days are days for you to work. That's why he said the seventh day is the Sabbath and you rest. So he says here in Genesis 2.1, Then the heavens and the earth was finished and all the living things that filled them. On the sixth day, the Almighty came to the end of his work, which he had done, and he so he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. The Almighty blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which he had done in his creation. So this still holds on, people. It never was changed, never was done away with. So I love to talk about it, because we're almost approaching the Sabbath right now. So I want you guys to have a wonderful and blessed Sabbath, Father, I ask that you be with the people watching. I ask that you be with each and every one of them, Father. We ask that you send holy angels to chase those who don't know you yet, Father. We ask that you touch their hearts, help touch their minds, and help them to come out of Babylon, come out of sin, Father. Helping them to give their sins to you, Father, where you can change them, where they can live, where you can live inside of them, Father, where you can change their DNA from Adam's seed to your seed. Yeshua, just help us, Father, to follow you, Father, in these wicked times, Yeshua. We ask that you bless Bless the people. We ask that you supply their needs according to your riches and glory in Yeshua HaMashiach, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. And we just thank you so much for all you're doing for your people all over the world, Father. We ask that you hold on to your remnant. We ask that our, the remnant hold on to you because times are running out. Time is running out. And we thank you so much, Father, for your love for us in every way. And we ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we bind that Satan. We bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against every person watching, every name in the prayer box, every man, woman, boy, girl, all the ministers, all the missionaries, all the evangelists, all the YouTubers, all the people who are watchmen for you, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit hold us close to you, and we thank you, and we ask these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua. So I'm going to hope you guys have a wonderful Shabbat, and I'll be back uh, anybody need books, you know how to write me, contact me, okay? I put them on my channel all the time, uh, and tracks, okay? Uh, go to www.angeltv.org and get your tracks so you can give out in your community in any language, all over the world, any language. Just go to them and contact them, and they'll be glad to send you the tracks out for you to use in your communities. So you guys have a wonderful blessing, uh, blessed shalom, shabbat shalom. Um, just say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Woo! Shalom. Okay. Hallelujah. Love Hallelujah. you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>